Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on G-protein coupled receptors. In this video, what we're going to talk about is the mechanism of action of both cholera toxin and pertussis toxin. So we're going to talk about cholera and pertussis toxin. Okay, um, so we're not going to discuss the pathogenesis of cholera, and we're certainly not going to discuss uh, the pathogenesis of whooping cough. We're just going to literally discuss the pharmacology of these toxins. Okay, so cholera and pertussis toxin. And these toxins are used experimentally all the time because of their effects on uh, heterotrimeric G proteins. Okay, right. Uh, so, before we can actually discuss what each of these toxins do, uh, what we need to first discuss is G-protein coupled receptors, heterotrimeric G-proteins, and the G-protein cycle. Okay, so, uh, let's start with G-protein coupled receptors then, or G-PCRs for short. Okay, so GPCR is just short for G protein couple receptor. I don't know what's wrong with this piece of paper. Okay, it's got a bit of a weird shape. There we go, I think it sorted itself out now. Right, so this is short for G protein coupled receptor. Okay, and there are dashes, strictly speaking, between G and protein, and protein and then coupled. So G protein coupled receptor. Okay, right. So G protein coupled receptors are a massive great family of proteins. There are 800 G protein coupled receptors in humans alone. Okay, so it is a massive family of proteins. Uh, in addition, uh, approximately 30 to 40 percent of the drugs currently in clinical use work by interacting with G protein coupled receptors. So this is a massive area uh, of pharmacology. Okay, right, so let's draw out the structure of a typical G-protein coupled receptor because they all have a conserved seven membrane spanning alpha helix called domain. Okay, so the amino terminus of G-protein coupled receptors is always extracellularly, so this side of this uh, membrane represents the extracellular fluid side, so I'll put ECF, and this side represents the cytoplasmic side. Okay, so I've put two lines there to represent the inner and outer leaflet of the phospholipid by there. Okay, and the amino terminus is always extracellularly. Then you have your first membrane spanning alpha helix, known as transmembrane domain 1, then an intracellular loop and onto transmembrane domain 2, another loop onto transmembrane domain 3, that's the first extracellular loop. Uh, then the second intracellular loop, transmembrane domain 4, the second extracellular loop, sorry, that was the second intracellular loop rather than the second extracellular loop. This is the second extracellular loop. Uh, then uh, the fifth membrane spanning alpha helix, the third uh, intracellular loop, the sixth membrane spanning alpha helix, the third extracellular loop, and then the seventh membrane spanning alpha helix to finish with the carboxylic acid. Uh, and uh, in the cytoplasm. Okay, so these are the uh, conserved seven membrane spanning alpha helices um, which are present in all G protein coupled receptors. Right, so uh, there are five different families of G protein coupled receptors. Okay, so um, you have. Eight, over 800 G protein coupled receptors in total to try and get some sort of grasp, uh, you know, some sort of classification of these. We classify them into uh, five separate families, okay? Now, easily the biggest family is the rhodopsin family of G protein coupled receptors. Okay, so the rhodopsin family has over 750 members within it. Okay, and the characteristic feature that rhodopsin family G protein coupled receptors have is they have a very short amino terminal domain. Okay, so the portion uh, that is extracellular and is uh, part of this amino terminal domain, so the portion before the first membrane spanning alpha helix, is quite small. And the main characteristic feature of them is that the ligand binds to residues which are within the transmembrane domain. So let me show the ligand here as this black dot. 
Okay, so that's the most important thing about rhodopsin family G protein coupled receptors, that their ligand will bind to them by binding to residues which are within the seven membrane spanning alpha helices. Okay, uh, so it binds to the transmembrane domain. Right, so this family is easily the biggest. There's around 750 members, basically. So 750 of the around 800 are within this family straight away. Okay, and it's named because rhodopsin is a G-protein coupled receptor, and uh, it uh, is within this family. It has a ligand bound to it uh, by binding to the transmembrane domains, basically. Okay, right. Other, uh, most of the G-protein coupled receptors that you'll know about will be in this family. So, for instance, the muscarinic acetylcholine receptors, all of the adrenoreceptors, the dopamine receptors, the histamine receptors, uh, the ser most of the serotonin receptors, things like that, they're all uh, within this family, basically. Okay, so uh, let's go on to the next family. So the next family of G-protein coupled receptors is the secretin family of G-protein coupled receptors. Okay, and this family, uh, its characteristic feature is that generally the ligand uh, for the G-protein coupled receptors within this family are uh, proteins rather than small molecules. Okay, so for instance, examples of G-protein coupled receptors in this family are receptors to calcitonin, okay? Receptors to parathyroid hormone are also in this family of secretin uh, G-protein coupled receptors. Uh, and also another very important example, glucagon. The receptors to glucagon are generally in the secretin family of G-protein coupled receptors, okay? And the characteristic feature that these secretin family G protein coupled receptors have is where they bind this ligand that is generally a peptide. Okay, so here are the seven membrane spanning alpha helices ending with the carboxylic acid tail here. And basically, they will have an amino terminal domain that might look something like this. Okay, and the the basic idea is that the peptide in the, this family of G-protein coupled receptors binds between the amino terminal domain and the seven membrane spanning alpha helices, so it might bind somewhere like that. Okay, so let me colour this in in turquoise. So this is the ligand here. It binds sort of wedged between the transmembrane domain, which is this portion consisting of the seven membrane spanning alpha helices, and then uh, the amino terminal domain here. So it's wedged in between them. And that's the characteristic feature of these secretin family G protein coupled receptors. And as I say, examples are, for instance, the calcitonin receptor, the parathyroid hormone receptor, the glucagon receptor. Okay, those are all examples. Now, uh, let's move on then. So the next family of G-protein coupled receptors is the glutamate family of G-protein coupled receptors. So remember I said we were going to cover five different families. So this is the third family, okay? So the glutamate receptor family, okay? And uh, basically, uh, you will know that glutamate is the main excitatory neurotransmitter within the brain. Okay, now most of the uh, receptors that you have for glutamate uh, within the brain are not uh, G protein coupled receptors. Instead, they are ligand gated ion channels. So, for instance, the kinate receptors, the AMPA receptors, the NMDA receptors, those are all ligand gated ion channels and they allow fast neurotransmission through glutamate. However, there are another family of glutamate receptors, which are the metabotropic glutamate receptors, uh, often called the m -gluars. So the little m is for metabotropic, the glu is for glutamate, and the r is for receptors. And there are around eight members of the metabotropic glutamate receptor family. And all of these are within this glutamate receptor family of G-protein coupled receptors. Other examples include the GABA B receptor, uh, well, the GABA B receptors. Okay, um, again, GABA is an extremely important neurotransmitter within the brain. Glutamate is the main excitatory neurotransmitter in the brain, so it stimulates action potentials in postsynaptic neurons. 
GABA is the most important inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain. It represses action potentials in the postsynaptic neuron. Okay, now again, most of the receptors for GABA that you have within the brain, they are ligand-gated ion channels rather than G-protein-coupled receptors. Okay, specifically, they're members of the cis-loop ligand-gated ion channel family. Okay, but um, some GABA receptors are uh, uh, G-protein-coupled receptors, and these G GABA B family of receptors are G-protein-coupled receptors, and they're in this family of glutamate. Uh, family G protein coupled receptors. Okay, now what's the characteristic feature that glutamate family G protein coupled receptors have? Well, basically, they still have the seven membrane spanning alpha helices. All G protein coupled receptors have the seven membrane spanning alpha helices. Okay, here is the amino terminus here, and basically, you'll see that I've drawn this sort of structure here. This domain, which I'm now going to highlight in blue, okay, this special domain here is called the Venus flytrap domain, okay, so this is the Venus flytrap domain, okay, and the reason it's called that is that the ligand for these glutamate family G protein coupled receptors will come into this Venus flytrap domain here and sit in the middle like so. And basically what will happen is those two halves of the Venus flytrap domain, they will close in around that ligand when it binds, just like a Venus flytrap will close around the fly. Okay, so that's the characteristic feature that these glutamate receptor family G protein coupled receptors all share. They have this Venus flytrap uh, mechanism of binding to their ligand. Okay, so the next family of G protein coupled receptors is the adhesion family of G protein coupled receptors. Okay, and this family is special because the ligand for the members of this family is basically not your typical idea of a ligand. Instead, it's extracellular matrix components. Okay, so the ligands for the adhesion family of G protein coupled receptors are generally components of the extracellular matrix. So these, the, this family of receptors generally contains members which have very large uh, amino terminal domains, like so. Okay, so here's a large amino terminal domain. And this large amino terminal domain will be able to bind to uh, components of the extracellular matrix. So let's say we have a component of the extracellular matrix here. So I'll just label this up as ECM for extracellular matrix. Okay, and this is shown here in turquoise. Right, so adhesion family G protein coupled receptors combine to components of the extracellular matrix, basically. They have large amino terminal domains which combine to components of the extracellular matrix. So that's what's special about these adhesion family uh, G protein coupled receptors. And the final family, then, now, the final family has the silliest name. Okay, so the final family of G protein coupled receptors is called the frizzled slash taste 2 family. And it's named after uh, the two most famous members of this family. Okay, and the, excuse me, 